let's go back and kind of take a look at some notation and some different types of equations and that sort of thing. Um, we already know chain rule. And to do implicit differentiation, we're going to have a chain every time we do things. OK, so like, let's just talk about for a minute something. If I wrote d dx of x to the third. So translate that for me. What's that say to do? Yeah, and I'm differentiating with respect to x. D dx, I'm differentiating with respect to x. And all I have here is just the plain x to the third. So we know it's 3x squared. So this is a straightforward, nice little derivative there. OK, and this and this, my variables agree. OK, so that means I'm differentiating with respect to x. So I'm just going to not do nice little power rule. OK, now let's switch this up a little bit. What if I was doing d dx of y to the third? It's not what? <laughs> not allowed as of right now because you don't know how to do implicit differentiation. I still need to differentiate with respect to x. OK, but this is a y to the third. All right, so here my variables disagree. Let's just, for the lack of a better way to phrase it. So when my variables disagree, I'm going to have to apply a chain rule. All right, now when we do this, I use y prime notation because we do that so much. When we were doing derivatives, if the function was y, we swap down y prime, and that was our derivative. If it was f of x, we used f prime. All right, if you Google implicit differentiation, you may see a dy over dx where I'm using a y prime. It's just different notations. You watched that one video on that one Wednesday that talked about the different notations all right, of different mathematicians on, on the different notations and calculus. So it's just preference. I like the y prime right now. We will introduce the dy over dx when we get to related rates, okay? But we're just not quite there yet. All right, so here, well, let's go ahead and do this though. So let's talk about this and then that might help going into where we're gonna go with this. Okay, so you're gonna, it is a y to the third. You're gonna go ahead and differentiate that like normal with power rule. You're gonna say this is three y squared because you're still gonna do power rule, okay? But then I've got to use a chain rule. So I'm going to do times my chain, y prime. So you're just gonna slap in a y prime every time you do the chain. So that's basically a nice little simple thing like that. The equations aren't gonna be simple like that, but they are. Okay, so let's do a graphical explanation of implicit differentiation. All right, so let's take a look at x squared plus y squared equals four. I'm writing it over there for a reason. I hope I have enough room here to finish this up. All right, so x squared plus y squared equals four. So what is that an equation of? It's an equation of a circle, all right? A circle of radius two, okay? So let's do this pictorially here. Okay, that's really sad. <clears throat> okay, so radius of two means that would be two. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, bad looking circle, but we're gonna go with it. Centers at the origin because it's x squared plus y squared, right? We know that. 
Now, <clears throat> let's randomly pick a point there in the first quadrant. Now, if I randomly pick a point there, can you tell me what the coordinates of that point are? Generically? Could I say that I'm going over, how far would that be? I'm on the x-axis, x? Because I don't know how far it is, right? And then could I randomly say I'm going up and how far would that be? Y, because I don't know, but it's gonna be on the y-axis, right? So the, that would be the point x, y. Does that make sense? Because I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be an x value. Whenever I start the origin, I go to the right, it's gonna be x. Then when I go up, it's gonna be some y value, okay? Now, from there, what is the, can I calculate the, well, that, let, let's put the, let's go ahead and put the tangent line on. I'm running out of colors. Let's go ahead and put the tangent line on. Okay. And we have talked about, have we talked about this line right here? It's the radius of the circle in relationship to the tangent line. In calculus, we call that the, oh, very good, normal line, yes. Okay, so this is the normal line, right? And the normal line would be perpendicular to that tangent line, right? And I've got this point out here. This point right here is obviously the origin, zero, zero. So can I come up with the slope of the normal line? Yes, because I know two points on that line, right? Because this point down here is zero, zero. So slope of that would be what? Y over X. Now, if I know the slope of the normal line, can I come up with the slope of the tangent line? Because they're perpendicular lines, right? And the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals. So I can do the slope of the tangent line. So it would be what? Negative x over y? Okay. So this is what we're doing. This is what we're going to do. Here's the equation. I went through this graphically. My slopes on both of those are in terms of x's and y. Okay. Now, do you remember from pre-calc? What type of equation is this? We had two different words. I made you identify equations either explicitly or implicitly. Remember, you had to, and it was very short, and it was only on one test, and it was like, oh, here, is this uh, implicit or is this explicit? So what form is this? It's implicit, right? Because I'm doing implicit differentiation because all the X's and Y's are all mixed up. Okay, so let's calculate the slope, the derivative, which will be the slope of the tangent algebraically. And in theory, I should come up with negative X over Y, right? I should, if I can do this right. So algebraically, Now watch my notation. I need to tell the person that I'm starting to take the derivative. And in the past, our function was called f of x. So then we would do f prime of x and then that would tell the person, hey, I'm doing my derivative. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a ddx on both sides of the equation to show that I am taking the derivative. So this is my original equation. So I'm gonna write ddx 
of x squared plus y squared. And then I have to do it separately to the right-hand side of the equation, d dx of four. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of my equation, and that's me, the person, if someone's looking at my work, that's signaling to them that I'm starting my derivative. All right, now I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. If there is an x, if it's an x term, I am just going to take the derivative like I always have, product rule, quotient rule, whatever, power rule, I'm just going to do it like normal. So right here on this x squared, I'm just going to do a good old fashioned 2x because we've been doing that forever. All right, if there is a y in a term with a y in it, I'm still going to take the derivative like normal, but I'm going to remember I have to put the chain in. Okay, so I'm going to do a 2y because that's just good old fashioned power rule with a y in there. But now I've got to remember because this is implicit differentiation, I got to put the chain in. So when I put the chain in, I slap in a y prime. Now, be very, very careful because you're going to get so sloppy with that prime notation, you're going to think it's a y to the first. So just make note that it's y prime. Okay, now I'm going to keep going. Derivative of just a good old fashioned constant is zero. All right. Now, so technically, right there's my derivative, but we want to go one step farther with implicit differentiation. I'm going to ultimately solve for y prime because what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the derivative. And y prime means derivative, right? So I want to solve all the way down for y prime so that I can finally say, oh, my derivative is equal to whatever. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So 2y, y prime is equal to a negative 2x. Now, can I solve for y prime by what? Dividing by 2y? So that's just good old fashioned algebra, divide by 2y divide by 2y, the 2y's cross out. All right, now what can I cross out on the right-hand side? I can cross out the twos. So then I'm gonna get down to a y prime is equal to a negative x over y. Okay, now from our graphical standpoint, do my derivatives match? Say what? <laughs> If I can do something algebraically, I can do it from the graph. Remember how I told you everything in calculus we're going to look at from an algebraic standpoint, a graphical standpoint, and a numerical standpoint? If I can do it algebraically, I can show it graphically. See, this is fun. Some of you look like you're bored. Don't be bored. This is fun. Okay. All right. So we're going to be doing this. Okay, algebraically, we're going to crank out the algebra, but every picture, I mean, and I did it with a very, very simple curve because we wouldn't want to done that with a nasty curve. I could have, all right, but this is what's going to look like. Now, important things that I'm going to grade on this first line, I want to see that DDX notation on both sides of the equal sign, and it has to be in front, so there's no getting sloppy and writing it on the right-hand side. doesn't go on the right-hand side. It goes in front. You got to write it. So you write the original problem down. When you write this down, you write DDX. Then you start doing it. This can have product rules. It can have quotient rules, power rules, which is what we did. So everything stays the same. If you have a term with a Y in it, you have to slap in the chain. So you're slapping in Y prime. Okay, now the only other thing that I'm gonna say, when we solve for Y prime, I'm gonna make everyone move the Y prime to the left and put everything else on the right. So when this last step is solve for y prime, your y prime I want on the left-hand side. I want you to solve it so that it's on the left. Yep. Okay, all right, so let's do some more of this.